everyone and welcome back to another cosplay tutorial. So today I'm going to be making some Hellboy horns, just the little circle ones, not the big big ones. Um, this is actually going to be a commission for someone else. No, I'm not doing a Hellboy cosplay, but that would be really awesome. But this is going to be a pretty simple tutorial and I think you guys might be able to recreate it yourself and I figured this would be pretty helpful since it is a male character. So for materials, you're going to need some soft clay foam, this stuff comes in all different colors and these little bitty baggies. I will link it below so you guys can get this if you're trying to recreate this tutorial. This stuff is pretty inexpensive and it doesn't matter what color it is since we're going to be painting the finished item. Another thing that you're going to need is a cup that's about the similar size of the horn that you're going to want to make. Obviously these are way too big for me, but the person that I'm doing them for is a lot larger. So I'm going to be using this big cup and with the foam that I got, it came with these three little tools that I think will be pretty useful during this tutorial. And yeah, this came with this foam, so you don't really have to worry about purchasing these separately. So let's get started. The first step that I want to do is I'm going to take a couple baggies of foam. Now I think we're going to start three, start with three for each horn. Oh, it's so hard to get it out of here. So you just kind of got to rip the whole bag open. Start like that. I can get it open. It's struggle time. I just zoom through this. have all of your colors you're just gonna be squishing them together the colors don't really need to mix up because they're it's all gonna look the same once it's all painted so we're gonna squish it around a little bit now let's roll it into a ball a suggestion that I have would be to clean off your workspace before you start to do this because if not you're gonna get a lot of dirt and dust and all sorts of crap in your in your ball here now we're gonna keep rolling it Roll it in your hands, roll it on a flat surface. Um, we're trying to get the, these creases to go away, these creases that happened whenever we folded it all up. So you're just gonna keep rolling. Keep rolling. See how they're starting to disappear? Just keep going. All right, now let's test it. Oh, it looks like this is actually gonna be too small, so let's add another packet. Let's add another packet of this stuff. I'm thinking we can get both horns out of this one ball here. I'm thinking that because um, the horns aren't really thick, or I guess they're not very wide. I'm just gonna start over with rolling Put that in there I guess I could have tested it last time before I did all of that I don't know yeah let's go ahead and add another of a, a, a fifth bag because you can always take it away it's harder to add more ah Ooh, that one we actually got a clean break on Just plastic out of my hand mush this in here roll it up all right now that looks like it's gonna be, yep. All right. All right, let's just start rolling it again. This part takes forever, I swear. I love working with foam, especially, you know, I love working with this clay foam stuff because it is basically like you have a clay in your hands and you can make it whatever it needs to be but it's light enough to where I can it's light enough to where I can use it for cosplay which is great all right now I am just still trying to get these little lines out just if you see the lines just kind of focus that part in the rolling I guess it doesn't matter too much because we will be uh, weathering this. Now we're just gonna, I don't know what you would call this, flatten it out just a little bit. All right, now we are going to shove it into our cup to get our shape. Hmm. 
Now the stuff on the extra, on the, the excess around it, we're just gonna peel that off, put it over here to the side. Now, give it a couple good shakes. Let's push this all down because we're gonna, we're gonna need to make a lip, but it's gonna be different than this. Try to roll it out. There we go. That looks a little better. All right. Now, I'm thinking, I didn't mention this in the beginning, but we are going to need a ruler for this. I'm thinking we need to make maybe an inch and a half. Inch and a half, yeah. Inch and a half. Let's just mark this all the way around. Inch and a half. So now we have our inch and a half marked out. Let's go ahead and take our ruler and just slice through it. Oh no, that's not slicing like I hoped it would. Uh, that does look really cool though. Let's see if we can roll that back out to be a circle. Because if not, the whole cup thing was completely obsolete. Horns. I'm thinking this might be just a little bit too thick. I think I might make that just a little bit smaller. Which is kind of hard because our little slicers don't really work. But let's try to cut some more off of it. Let me try my stiffer ruler here. Let's see. That looks good to me. Try more of a cutting motion rather than a pushing down and slicing. sorts of messy. Try not to flatten it too much. Definitely, definitely flattening it. One of the good things about this is the fact that his little horn things aren't perfectly round. Or perfectly smooth, I should say. They're not perfectly smooth. We are going to have to add some indentions. But let's try to start out with something that's perfectly smooth so we can control where the indentions are and have them make sense. All right, now we're just going to be flattening and making sure it's cylindrical, rolling and pressing. You can never do too much to make sure that it's perfect. All right, I think this one is good still seems a little bit thick to me. Is that, that's not even the same width as this is now. make the next one. Let's try to start with this piece here and see if there's something we can do with it. Realizing now that all of that ball making earlier was pretty much useless. There's somebody outside my apartment yelling right now so if you can hear that I'm so sorry. going to be constantly checking the size difference, making sure that I'm not making one thicker than the other, which I think I am. Let's see. Let's continue to flatten this one because it's still just a little too big. Keep rolling it. Let's see. 
I just need the bottom of this one to be a little bit flatter. Oh, see, that's too big now. the thing with this stuff is it takes about a day to dry so you don't have to rush with it. putting them up next to each other, trying to line them up to make sure that one's not bigger than the other. Because that's just not a flattering look. Okay, and they look to be about the same thickness. Of course, it doesn't need to be perfect. Now, let's get on with the fun part. Okay, so now that I have my horns nice and measured out, I'm going to be weathering them. First part of this, I think I'm actually going to try to make more of a sharper edge, which is going to be me just pushing them in instead of having this round edge, I want more of a flat edge. So I'm going to be pushing it all the way around, trying not to lose too much of the shape that we just spent so long creating. All right. See the difference? Yeah. Rolling. All right, now we have our two little, two little beautiful donuts here. Now, with weathering, I would like to start on the outside. So on the outside, it's mostly smooth with just a little bit of a texture. So I'm gonna take this little piece here that I don't know if you can see it, but it has little bitty teeth on it. I'm gonna use that. Actually, no, let's use this piece. I'm gonna take this tool here. I'm gonna take this tool here, which has these little bitty grooves on them. I don't know if you can see them. There it is. Yeah, they have those little bitty grooves on them and I'm just going to push them in randomly, maybe at an angle, maybe side to side, overlapping, just to give it some texture. And I know that we probably, I can't really see it yet, but I think once we paint it, we'll be able to see all this added texture. Because we just wanna, wanna make it look like an actual pair of horns and no horns are gonna be completely smooth and flat. Try to drag it a little bit. Yeah, that's nice. Some sideways, diagonally, overlapping, just all that good stuff. Okay, now for the tops, I am going to mark these. Which one's the top or not? Let's see. I have that little brown marker here. There we go. Mark it with a T for top. That way, whenever I'm painting it, I know what's what. Okay, now we are gonna take our little slicey tool that came with it, it's a little, like a little knife, and we will just go through, start in the center and come out. Maybe don't do straight lines each time, just some waves, make little cracks off of that. Try not to make them symmetrical. Just anything random. They don't always have to come out and meet. Just trying to make it all look like it has been shaven off once again. Here, we'll add one here that isn't even connected to anything. Let's use the other end and maybe get a different kind of cut. go. Try not to flip it up just like I did. There we go. There's a nice 
nice weathered one right there. Let's add some more. It looks good. Let's do it to the other one. have so far. I wish I would have saved one of these bags so I could have saved this piece because this is a good amount of foam here. Anyways, now that we have our pieces, we're going to work on the bottom, which I need to go through and make a transition. So when you adhere this with liquid latex or something similar, um, it will end adhere to the skin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the bottom layer and pinch ever so slightly. Just the tiniest amount that I can get in between my fingers, I'm gonna pinch it up. See what I'm talking about? How it's got just the tiniest little lip on it. Just gonna go all the way around. It doesn't really need to be even because the part where it's growing out of his head isn't really even. Just make sure you've got a lip enough of it for it to be noticeable, I guess. If it looks like it doesn't have enough, just go ahead and add some more. Okay, now you're gonna go through and push the lip out. Out enough, just make more lip, push it out. Right there, it's not quite enough. See what I mean? How it has this little transition from horn to head. That was too much lip. Just make sure you got a nice amount. Because what I would recommend is covering this whole backside in liquid latex or maybe like an X formation of liquid latex and then all around the circumference of it because I think that would get you the best result. Okay, now we're done with that part. Let's add a lip to this one. Second lip added here. Just make sure it's not too crinkly or anything like this. Okay, now that we have our pieces all ready to go, these are gonna need to dry for like a day and a half. Normally is the time that it is ready to work. And it's gonna feel like an EVA foam type consistency, which is really great. So I'm going to put these bad boys on a piece of wax paper so it doesn't stick to my desk and let them sit. Okay, so I've let my foam horns dry for two days and I've covered them with just a small layer of Plasti Dip. I decided to go a little bit lighter on the sides because there's texture here and I don't want that texture to get ruined by the Plasti Dip because Plasti Dip tends to fill holes. All right, so what we're going to be doing with these today is we're just going to be painting them and finishing them off. So for paint today, I have a black, kind of like a brick red color, and then just like a candy red apple color. Maybe turn that one upside down so I can actually get something out of it. Um, I chose these colors because obviously those are Hellboy horn colors. So let's get started with this. Come out. Oh my god. Oh 
That's why we always shake our paints. Jesus. Moving on. out of this color. <clears throat> Maybe I should store my paints upside down like a responsible cosplayer. Brushes here. Well, these aren't paint brushes. These are actually all old makeup brushes. So there's that. Um, let's start with this flat tip one, and we're gonna paint practically the whole inside this red color. Try to get it into the cracks because the inside of the crack is what I want to be red. Going in circles, we try to get it in all the little crevices. Paint the whole thing red. We'll do more fading as we go on. But with acrylics, you have to layer the paint. I think this one turned out better than this one. If I do say so myself. Circles. Okay, now take your heat gun and on a lower on the lower heat, um, hold it from pretty far away and just hit it with your heat gun. As you can see, it helps the layers dry down so much faster. But if you can see, there's lots of red inside of our crevices. So let's keep going. We're gonna do like, let's say, let's do three more layers like this. start with this maroon here and this we're gonna just mix a little bit of the maroon the red and the black here it's just oh too much black way too much black let's just start with the maroon how about we do that paint it all around bring it down this way Blend it. Blend it down. Blend it around. Just make sure you don't have like this this little line right here where you can see it goes from the maroon to the red. You want to just oh there was black on there. You want to just do a little circle motion, flips up and down, just whatever motion you can think to use to get it to blend. Let's take your red paintbrush that I should not have put into water. Take the one that you had the red on. Blend it. Because this needs to look natural because these are naturally growing horns. See the difference? Whenever you add another color other than just the flat red. 
and this is why we went for a black base because it all just needs to look dirty and grungy. Let's fix that right there because that looks like a chunk was taken out of it. It's too dark and grungy. Oh no! Just dip my whole fingernail in that. Too dark and grungy. Let's see if we can get some more red paint. <clears throat> That's a problem that can come up if you aren't patient, like I am impatient. So yeah, the difference between So yeah, here's the difference between the ones that have been weathered a little bit and the just straight up one color flat red. Let's go ahead and do that to this one. focus on painting the sides. We're going to paint the sides the red color and probably just go over them with the maroon color. That way we have a, a nice base. red color but the rounded edge here we want to make make it blend you want to keep this red because the face is red and it will look weird if it's just off color once the person paints their face of course how the cowboy's face isn't completely just a stark red color Again, take that red brush, marry the colors. Alrighty, I have left a huge black spot on my desk, but as you can see, I don't really care about getting paint on my desk because I'd rather get paint on my desk surface than waste paper. So here's this. Um, now let's go ahead and seal it up. We're just gonna use Mod Podge today because I don't have any clear spray paint and this works just as well. Ugh. Look at that, it's all stuck. Yeah. Maybe I just don't take care of my stuff well enough. All right, I'm trying to find my brush with the long, wide bristles. This won't take me as long. Just take your little paintbrush here, dip it in, paint all over. And this will dry clear, so no, we're not ruining it. Just make sure that you get into all those little crevices because the acrylic paint will chip. Make sure 
that your brush goes directly into water. You gotta rinse that out or that Mod Podge will ruin your brushes. Obviously, this person is much larger than me, so these are way too big for my head, but they'll be perfect for his head. See? Perfect. Perfect. Well, I hope you learned something or at least had a little bit of fun. Um, thank you for watching my video. Um, I hope to have some more out for the men. I know I do a lot of um, women-centric cosplays. Um, maybe I'll have a couple more how-tos for male cosplays because I know Hellboy is pretty popular. So um, thank you for watching and I'll see you again next month. Bye!